Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video we'll be talking about the electrical activity of the heart and we'll be talking about the pacemaker potential. The video following on from this will be talking about the myocardial action potential. So let's begin this video. We have a diagram here showing the heart and it clearly shows uh, several of the pacemakers of the heart. They include the sinoatrial node which is located here, the atrioventricular node which is located here and the Purkinje fibers here which help to spread the uh, action potential to the myocardial cells of the ventricles. So let's begin with this small introduction here. So the pacemaker region of the heart, the sinoatrial node firstly, exhibits a spontaneous depolarization that causes action potentials resulting in automatic beating of the heart. Now the action potentials are conducted by myocardial cells in the atria and are transmitted to the ventricles by specialized conducting tissues. The myocardial cells are short, branched and interconnected by gap junctions and these gap junctions function as electrical synapses. The entire mass of all these cells which are interconnected by gap junctions are called, is called a myocardium and the myocardium is a single functioning unit because the action potentials that originate in any cell in the mass can be transmitted to all of the other cells. There are three regions which can generate action potentials. They are known as pacemakers. The sinoatrial node functions as the primary pacemaker and it's located in the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cava. It is the primary pacemaker. And if we look at this diagram here, you can see here is the location of the sinoatrial node. The two secondary pacemakers are the atrioventricular node and the Purkinje fibers, which we pointed out previously. Now let's talk about the pacemaker potential. This is a difficult concept, but let's get through it. The cells of the sinoatrial node do not maintain a resting membrane potential like resting neurons or skeletal muscle. In fact, during diastole, which is the resting phase of the heart, the sinoatrial node has slow spontaneous depolarization, and this is also known as the pacemaker potential. The membrane potential initially begins at minus 60 millivolts and gradually depolar depolarizes to minus 40 millivolts, which is the threshold for producing an action potential in these cells. Spontaneous depolarization of, pace of pacemaker potential is produced by opening the same channels as for hyperpolarization. So once they're opened, we have permeability to sodium and potassium ions. So what happens is the entry of sodium dominates and this produces depolarization because it increases the positivity of the inside of the cell so it depolarizes to minus 40 millivolts. And this process which occurs during diastole is therefore known as diastolic depolarization. When diastolic depolarization reaches a threshold, so the minus 40 millivolts, Voltage-gated calcium ion channels are opened in the plasma membrane of pacemaker cells. We have inward diffusion of these calcium ions which produces the upward phase of the action potential and also causes the contraction of the myocardial cells. And then to repolarize and go back to minus 60 millivolts we have the phase of repolarization and that's produced by opening voltage-gated calcium ions and outward diffusion of potassium. So, just to finish off this video, diastolic depolarization occurs faster in response to epinephrine and norepinephrine. They stimulate beta-1 adrenergic receptors, causing production of cyclic AMP within the pacemaker cells. And this keeps the pacemaker channels, or the HCN channels, open. And this results in a faster rate of diastolic depolarization, therefore a faster heart rate. The rate of diastolic depolarization is slowed by the action of parasympathetic axons, primarily because acetylcholine is released by these axons, which cause the opening of separate calcium, uh, potassium channels and movement of potassium out of the pacemaker cells, and it slows down the time required to reach diastolic threshold. So we have a slower heart rate. 